Jessica looked out of the attic window into the square. A heavy, dark grey sky hung down over the roofs of the houses. The old tree in the middle of the square looked black in the rain. Jessica felt more lonely than she'd ever felt in her life before. The square looked so dark and empty. It wasn't even a real square. Uncle Joe had said it was an old boatyard. A hundred years ago, the boat builder had given up boats and built houses instead. It was still called the yard. And as she looked out at the tree dripping with rain, Jessica thought that it was a good name for it. It was still just a yard with houses round it. Jessica had never lived in a town before. She'd lived in the country near a village. Only a few weeks ago, she'd been standing at the window of her own home, looking down the lane outside. The sun had been shining then, there was snow on the hills. She and Simon had been waiting for their father and mother to come home. And they'd never come. The car in which they were travelling had crashed. Jessica and Simon never saw them again. Jessica choked now and gave herself a little shake. She mustn't think about that now. She and Simon were here in the town. They were living with Auntie Lizzie and Uncle Joe, and they had to make the best of it. Auntie Lizzie hadn't really wanted them, Jessica knew that. But Auntie Lizzie was a mother's sister, and she felt they had to give them a home. What will people say if I don't? Jessica had heard her say to Uncle Joe. Of course I must. And are they not babies? They can look after themselves. They'll have to fit in. They had fitted in as best they could and Uncle Joe didn't seem to mind having them around the house. But even with Simon there, Jessica often felt lonely. She was feeling lonely now as she looked out into the rain. At that moment, Jessica saw the cat. He was a little grey and white cat with long white whiskers. He had very big ears and a very long tail. He was sitting under the tree in the middle of the yard, trying to keep out of the rain. As Jessica watched him, a boy came into the yard through a gap in the houses. The little cat ran up to him and took a flying leap onto his shoulder. The boy laughed and ran up the steps of one of the houses. He opened the door and went inside, with the cat still clinging to his coat. Jessica! Uncle Joe called from below. Jessica! We need some sausage rolls for tea. How would you like to go down to shop and get them? Auntie Liz will be home soon. Jessica opened the door of the attic and went slowly downstairs. Uncle Joe was waiting for her. It's after four o'clock, he said. Auntie Liz will be back soon. They get sausage rolls in every day of a shop along by the canal. We're Simon. Oh, there was a boat going by, said Jessica. Simon went out to look at it. Well, tell him to come back now. Auntie Lizzie won't wait tea for him when she comes in, said Uncle Joe. He yawned. Uncle Joe worked on night shifts and he slept most of the day. Here's the money, he said. Don't be long. Jessica put on a coat and went out into the yard. It was still raining, but the clouds were beginning to break a little. She ran down the steps and through the gap in the houses that led to the canal. She turned right along the big wall and slowed down to a walk. The lights were on in the shop. Jessica remembered the little village shop at home. Mrs Tring, who kept the shop, used to bake cakes and things to sell. There was always a lovely smell of fresh bread when you went in. It wasn't like that in this shop. The shop was full of people and smelt of wet clothes. Jessica got the sausage rolls. The man in the shop put them in a plastic bag for her so they wouldn't get wet. It almost stopped raining when she got outside. She looked up and down the canal for Simon, but she couldn't see him. She hadn't gone more than a few steps when she saw a boy coming towards her. He was bigger than she was and he was grinning. She kept close to the wall, but as he met her, the boy suddenly stepped sideways. He stopped in front of her. What's your name? He demanded. What's yours? Asked Jessica. Never you mind, said the boy. What have you got there? Jessica put the bag behind her. It's no business of yours, she said. I'll make it my business, said the boy. Hand it over. A big stone crashed down onto the pavement between Jessica and the boy. The boy jumped backwards. He looked up. That cat, he cried. I'll get that cat one day. 
Jessica looked up too. The little grey and white cat was standing on top of a wall. His green eyes were shining and he was waving his long tail. Jess! Hey Jess! Simon came running along the street towards them. The boy swung round and saw Simon. I'll get that cat, he said again. Just let him come near me again. He set off down the street without another word. Who was that? asked Simon as he came up. I don't know, but I don't like him, said Jessica. He was going to take the sausage rolls. I'll knock him down if he tries anything, said Simon. He's bigger than you, said Jessica. You'd better keep out of his way. Just let him try something, said Simon, looking after the boy. It began to rain harder again. Come on, said Jessica, I'll race you back. Simon never said no to a race. They both tore off down the street and into the yard. They reached the door of the house together. Simon opened the door and they half jumped, half fell inside. Who's the boy with the grey and white cat? asked Jessica as they sat down to tea. How should I know? said Aunt Lizzie. We've only lived here three months. What time are you going out tonight, Joe? Seven, said Uncle Joe. Was he the boy who tried to take the sausage rolls? asked Simon. Jessica shook her head. What was that? asked Uncle Joe. Someone tried to take the sausage rolls? It was just a boy I met, said Jessica. I don't know if he would have taken them. You tell me. If anyone doesn't behave himself, said Uncle Joe, I'll see you're all right. Well, I don't know what's going on with boys these days, said Aunt Lizzie, but something is, and the girls are just as bad, the trouble they cause. Aunt Lizzie was cross and tired. It had been a difficult day at the shop. Some children had been shoplifting, stealing things from the counters, and she'd had to call the police. She talked about nothing else over tea. Simon and Jessica went upstairs to the attics early to escape. Simon started making a new model aeroplane, and Jessica went into her room to read. Jessica was glad that Aunt Lizzie had put them in the attics. She knew they were up there because Auntie Lizzie wanted them out of the way. But then, Jessica wanted to be out of Auntie Lizzie's way. Her room looked out over the yard, and Simon's looked out over the backyard and the road that ran by the canal. She liked being right at the top of the house. She and Simon could go up the stairs to the attics and feel they'd entered their own world where no one else came. It was late when at last Jessica finished a book and put out the light. She got into her pyjamas. She went to the window, drew back the curtains and looked down at the big tree. It stopped raining, but the street lamp had gone out and it was very dark. She couldn't see anyone in the yard and yet she had a feeling that someone was there. She looked across at the houses. Their windows were dark too. Suddenly, a light flashed in the window of the attic in a house on the opposite side of the yard. It looked like a torch flashing. Then the torch swung round and round in a circle of white light and went out again. Jessica opened a window and peered out. A light was flashing in the attic window of a house down on the right on the corner of the yard. Then that light went out and there were more flashes from the house opposite. It must be those two boys, Jessica said to herself. She'd seen them in the yard together the first day she came. One was a boy with a grey and white cat, and she'd seen the other one go into the corner house. There was one long and one short flash from the house in the corner, and then three red flashes from the window opposite. Jessica shivered. There were dark shadows in the yard. Someone put a lighted candle in the window opposite. Jessica stood there watching for a long time, but nothing more happened. She was just going to leave the window and get into bed when the candle went out. The torch flashed on again, it was green this time, and it swung in a big circle. A circle of green light showed in the window of a house in the corner, then both torches went out. The street lamp in the yard suddenly came on again. Jessica peered down, there was no one there. The yard was quite empty. She shut the window and climbed into bed. When Jessica looked out of the bedroom window the next morning, the stars were still shining, but the sky was beginning to grow pale. She got dressed and went across to Simon's room. Simon was already up. He was looking out of the window, watching a boat on the canal. It was still dark. The street lights were on. 
Oh, come and look at this old barge, he said when he saw Jessica. It's tied up by the bank, but there's no one on it. Jessica looked out of the window. I wonder what it's doing, she said. She was just going to tell him about the flashing torches the night before when Auntie Lizzie's voice came up from below. Jessica, Simon, aren't you up yet? Hurry up, come and have your breakfast. It's nearly half past seven and your uncle wants to get to sleep. Uncle Joe usually got home about seven in the morning. Auntie Lizzie had to be at work by nine and Simon and Jessica had to keep quiet all day so that Uncle Joe could sleep. We'd have done better to send you to school right away, said Auntie Lizzie as they came downstairs. It would have kept you out of the house and given you something to do. Oh, they don't make much noise, said Uncle Joe. Give them a chance, Lizzie. They need to get a bit of time to get used to the place before they go to school. Anyway, school will be breaking up for Christmas soon. I'll be glad when it starts again, said Auntie Lizzie. I've enough to do without a job and the house to look after, without worrying about two children. Auntie Lizzie was the manager of a big shop in the town, and she did work very hard. Now then, Lizzie, said Uncle Joe, there have been no trouble. You get ready for work. They'll keep quiet enough for me. After breakfast, Auntie Lizzie went out to her shop, and Uncle Joe went off to get some sleep. Simon was working on the model aeroplane in his room upstairs. Jessica decided to go outside. She put on a coat and ran down the steps into the yard. She'd only taken a few steps when she stopped and stood still, staring. A strange log of wood was lying on the ground. For a moment, Jessica thought it was alive. It looked like a little black cat. But when she looked closely, she saw it was only a log of wood. She bent down slowly and picked it up. There were two silver coins underneath it, each with a hole in the middle. The coins were shining brightly. They looked almost as if they were on fire with silver light. Jessica put down the wood and picked up the coins. She held them in her hand. She'd never seen anything like them before. They had strange signs on them and they looked very old. The coins felt very cold too as they lay in her hand. She stared at them. It was just like holding two pieces of ice in her hand. Jessica slipped them into her pocket. She was just going back to show the coins to Simon when she heard a little clatter, as if something was coming into the yard. She turned round and saw a thin, bent old man coming through the gap in the houses. His hair was tied back and his dress looked strange. He had a dark red coat and his shoes clip-clopped on the pavement. He went over to the tree in the middle of the yard and looked up at the house where the little cat lived. Jessica could hear him talking to himself. Not here, he said crossly. I might have known not here. I'm sent all this way to see him and he's not here. At school, most likely. I'll have to wait all day in the cold till he comes back. Just my luck. Not here. He turned round and saw Jessica watching him. Oh, he cried. So you're another of them. Perhaps you all do. I, I don't know what you mean, said Jessica. Perhaps you don't. Perhaps you do said the man. You can see me, can't you? Jessica nodded. He seemed so strange that she felt a little frightened of him. Then you're another one of them, he said. Do you know who I am? Jessica shook her head. I knocker, I am, said the man. Sent here and sent there, taking messages for Melinda. He glared at her. Do you know Melinda? He demanded. Jessica shook her head again. Well, she must know you, or you wouldn't be able to see me, said Knocker. Most ordinary folk can't see me at all, and you're one of the ordinary folk you are. Do you know Tim? You see the boy who lives in that house with a cat? asked Jessica. That's right, said Knocker. At least you know that much. That cat Sebastian lives with him when he's at off doing something for Melinda. Perhaps I shan't have to wait as long as I thought. Can you give Tim a message? Jessica nodded. You sure you remember? said Knocker. It would be just my luck if you forgot. Melinda would think I should have stayed here all day and then I should be in real trouble. Nobody helps poor old Knocker. Nobody. I'll remember, said Jessica. Knocker looked at her for a moment. He was trying to make up his mind whether to tell her. A gust of cold wind blew across the yard. Knocker shivered. 
I'll not stay here and freeze to death, he grumbled to himself. All right then, I'll tell you, and don't you forget. If you forget, Melinda will be angry, and I don't know what she'll do. Turn you into a frog, perhaps, I shouldn't care if she did, but she'd be angry with me too. Oh, my poor back. He straightened himself up and put one hand behind him. I won't forget, said Jessica. Tell Tim that he's got to go and see Melinda tomorrow, that's Saturday, and he won't have to go to school, so he won't have any excuse. He's got to go and see Melinda. Something has happened, something dangerous. You can tell him that too. What's happened? asked Jessica. Oh, how do I know? said Knocker crossly. Nobody ever tells me anything. I'm just Knocker. Sent here and sent there with messages of people who are not at home. I'll tell him, said Jessica. I won't forget. Mind you, don't, said Knocker. And don't tell anyone else either. It'll be dangerous enough for him to go and see Melinda without everyone knowing he's coming. It's dangerous to go past Hollow Hill just now. They don't tell me anything. I'm only Knocker. But I know more than they think. He turned and clip-clopped out of the yard without another word. Jessica went back slowly into the house. She wanted to think. She wasn't afraid of Knocker, but she wasn't like anyone she'd ever seen before. She left a coat in the hall, but she took the coins out of her pocket and carried them upstairs to her room. They looked much duller now, but they still looked very strange. She was going to put them away in a drawer when she remembered that she hadn't lived in the house very long. She couldn't be sure yet that Auntie Lizzie wouldn't come up to her room. She didn't want her to find the coins. She remembered a long bit of silver string she'd put away. Someone had given her a book as a present and tied it up with red paper and silver string. Jessica had saved both. She found the string and pushed one end through the hole in the middle of one of the coins. She was just going to thread the other coin on the string when she stopped. Why are there two coins? she said to herself. She had a feeling that the coins had been left for her to find. She stood thinking for a moment, then she tied the two ends of string together and hung one coin around her neck. She pushed it under a sweater so that no one would see it. It didn't feel cold anymore. She opened the door and went across the little landing to Simon's room, holding the other coin in her hand. Simon? said Jessica, opening the door. Simon, look at this. She held out the coin. Simon looked up. He was sitting at a little table just fixing the wings on his model aeroplane. Where did you find that? he asked, looking at the coin. Outside in the yard, said Jessica. There were two coins. They were under some wood. I think somebody had put them there for us. I think one coin is for me and one is for you. They can't be for us, said Simon. We don't know anyone here. I've got a strange feeling about them, said Jessica. I'm sure someone put them there for me to find. Anyway, let's keep them for a bit and see. All right, said Simon. He took the coin and looked at it. It looks old, he said. It looks strange, said Jessica. It was shining when I found it, and now it isn't. Put it somewhere safe. Simon put the coin in his pocket. I won't lose it, he said. He knew that it was no use arguing with Jessica about her strange feelings. She did have strange feelings from time to time, and Simon knew that she was often right. He turned back to his model. Hold this wing a moment, Jess, he said. I haven't got it quite right. Jessica held the wing of the aeroplane for him. She was just going to tell him about Knocker when she remembered that Knocker had said, Don't tell anyone. She hadn't promised not to say anything. It couldn't matter Simon knowing. Simon, she said, an old man came into the yard just after I found the coins. Was he looking for them? asked Simon. Jessica shook her head. He gave me a message for a boy who lives the other side of the yard. His name's Tim. He was signalling out of his window last night with a torch. Who was he signalling to? asked Simon. The boy who lives in the corner house. At least I think so. I saw a torch flashing there too. I'm going out to catch Tim when he comes home from school. I'll come too, said Simon. I saw him yesterday by the canal. He looked all right. Good, said Jessica. We'll slip out before Auntie Lizzie gets back. There's something queer going on. I'd love to signal with a torch at night, said Simon. We could see their windows too. We could easily signal. But we don't know anyone here. It's rotten. 
Well, we'll soon know one of them now, said Jessica. Simon and Jessica went out into the yard just before four o'clock. They stood by the tree. Jessica was hoping to see the little grey and white cat when Knocker himself came round the corner into the yard. Oh, you're here, he said, hobbling slowly across to them. Oh, my poor feet. He leant up against the tree and took off one of his shoes. He pushed his thumbs against the back of the shoe, dropped it and slipped his foot into it again. Simon stared at him. I thought you'd gone, said Jessica. I haven't forgotten. We're waiting for Tim. Well, you needn't, said Knocker. I shall see him myself now. Who have you got here with you? Simon. He's my brother, said Jessica. Ah, said Knocker. Then I've got a message for him too. I have a message for both of you. Why couldn't Melinda give me the message for you the first time? I don't know. But nobody thinks about poor old Knocker. And now I've had to come all the way back just to see you. My poor feet are nearly falling off. But Melinda doesn't care a bit about me. Oh no, I'm not Melinda's favourite. I'm not. I'm sorry you had to come back, said Jessica. I don't know Melinda. Well, you soon will, said Knocker. She sent you a message. You're to go and see her tomorrow. You and that brother of yours. You're to go and see her with Tim. Where does she live? asked Jessica. Tim knows, said Knocker. There's no need for me to waste my time telling you. I've got enough to think about. I've got to get back to Melinda and it'll be dark in a few minutes. It's not safe to go past Hollow Hill in the dark. Not now, but Melinda doesn't care what happens to me. Nobody cares about me, I'm just old Knocker. It's not quite dark yet, said Jessica. Why don't you start back? We can tell Tim. Knocker looked angrily at her. If you don't want to talk to me, you don't, he said crossly. All right, you tell Tim. Only mind you, do tell him. And don't tell anyone else. I said that to you last time. What did you do? You told that brother of yours. Well, don't tell anyone but Tim this time, or you'll never get to Melinda's house, any of you. With that, he turned and stumped off out the yard. Whatever did he mean by that? asked Simon. I don't know, said Jessica. But he did say I wasn't to tell anyone. I did tell you. Well, it didn't matter, said Simon. The message was for both of us. There was a little purr at Jessica's feet, and a little grey and white cat was there. He rubbed himself against her legs. Jessica bent down and stroked him. The cat let her stroke him two or three times, and then he suddenly ran off. She looked up. The boy she had seen before was coming into the yard. The little cat dashed forward, took a flying leap and landed on his shoulder. The boy stopped to stroke the cat for a moment. Then he looked round. He saw Simon and Jessica watching him. Hello, he said. Are you Tim? asked Jessica. We've got a message for you. Yes, I'm Tim, said the boy. What is it? Knocker was here, said Jessica. He said that you had to go and see Melinda tomorrow. Tim stared at her. You're... You're not one of the hidden people, are you? He asked. I don't know who the hidden people are, said Jessica. But you can see them, said Tim. You must be able to see them if you saw Knocker. Who are they? asked Simon. I could see Knocker too. Don't you know? asked Tim, looking from Jessica to Simon. Are they ghosts? asked Simon. They're not exactly ghosts, said Tim, but they're people ordinary folk can't see. We're ordinary folk, at least I am and I think you must be too. Ordinary folk can't see the hidden people unless they have a silver key or a coin. Then they can. Knocker's one of them. I found two silver coins lying on the ground just before I saw Knocker, said Jessica. I've got one, and I gave Simon the other. Then that's it then, said Tim. That's the way you can see the hidden people. Melinda must have sent you the coins. Something must be happening. There were hidden people in the yard last night. Knocker said we're to go with you to see Melinda tomorrow, said Simon, but we don't know who Melinda is. Melinda's a safe witch, said Tim. She's really safe too. You'll like Melinda. She's very secret, but... Are you sure? Knocker said you were to go with me. Jessica nodded. Did Knocker say anything else? Tim asked. Did he say why we had to go? He said that something had happened, something dangerous. Then he said that nobody ever told him anything, said Jessica. But I think he knew something. 
He said something about it being dangerous to go past Hollow Hill. Where's Hollow Hill? It's on the other side of the canal. We'll pass it on the way to see Melinda, said Tim. It's a big hill and it's hollow. Some of the hidden people live inside it. He looked at Jessica. Are you sure you want to come? He said. I expect Locker's right. It may be a bit dangerous. Some of the hidden people are friendly, but some of them aren't. I didn't like the look of the ones I saw last night. Was that when you were signalling? asked Jessica. Yes, said Tim. Did you see that too? I was signalling to Aaron. And he came over, but he's going away today. He's going away till after Christmas. Yeah, we'll come with you, said Jessica. I'm not afraid, said Simon. I'll have to go, said Tim. I always go if Melinda wants me. She doesn't send for me unless she needs me. Melinda must want the three of us. She sent the coins for you. I just found them, said Jessica. They were lying on the pavement. Yeah, I expect Sebastian put them there for you to find, said Tim. He often does things for Melinda. He scratched the little cat under the chin, and Sebastian purred. Jessica? Simon! They heard Uncle Joe calling. Come on in and give me a hand with two you two. Auntie Lizzie will be back soon. They looked around. Uncle Joe was standing on the steps outside the door of their house. We'll have to go, Tim, said Jessica. All right, said Tim. I'll see you in the morning. I can't get away before 11. I've got things to do for Aunt May, but, but we'll still have time to go. We'll start about 11 if we can get away. We must be back before dark. But don't tell anyone what's happening. It's better not to say anything. We won't, said Simon. Come on, you two! called Uncle Joe. I'll see you tomorrow, said Tim. They ran off to the house and Tim and Sebastian went inside.